Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. If someone approaches you with an offer like, would you like to become wealthy? And not just wealthy, but earn two million in three months without lifting a finger. Your initial reaction might be, this individual is likely a scammer. There's no such thing as a free lunch, is there? It's not a scam. There is actually such a favorable opportunity, and it's unique to China. Of course, there is a catch, and that catch is called debt. You become a professional debt bearer, borrowing money and intentionally not repaying it. We all know that repaying debt is a moral obligation, and you should not only return the principal amount, but also the interest. However, in contemporary China, there exists a profession of professional debt bearers, and there are intermediaries involved in this trade. Intermediaries would suggest that you can sign a no repayment agreement for the borrowed money, meaning you won't have to pay it back. Isn't that like free money? For the average person who works tirelessly all year, their annual income might not even reach 100,000 yuan. It would take them 20 years to earn 2 million yuan. Now becoming a professional debt bearer with a non-repayment agreement in hand is an alluring opportunity. This substantial wealth represents a chance to change one's life for most people. As for the potential consequences, according to the intermediaries' persuasive descriptions, they don't appear important, not important at all. Why have professional debt bearers emerged as a distinct occupation, and why has an entire industry developed around them? This phenomenon is directly linked to the current financial turmoil in China. As China's economy faces increasing challenges, the Beijing government continues to print more money. However, a critical question arises. Why hasn't this surge in money supply led to inflation, at least not yet? Despite the substantial growth in China's M2 money supply, the majority of Chinese citizens still find themselves financially constrained. So where has all this newly created money gone? The answer lies in the fact that it has largely remained within the confines of the banking system, primarily utilized for debt repayment. The freshly printed currency hasn't succeeded in stimulating economic activity. Instead, it has largely stagnated within the banking sector. With significant sums of idle money, banks are seeking profitable avenues, and the perceptive intermediaries have recognized this opportunity, giving rise to the profession of professional debt bearers, where one party is willing to lend and the other is willing to borrow. The fundamental reason behind China's financial turmoil lies in the real estate bubble. Firstly, housing prices are on the decline, and second-hand properties struggle to find buyers, causing a liquidity crisis. Additionally, economic pressure has surged, resulting in a rise in unemployment, leaving some property owners facing the risk of defaulting on their mortgages. For individuals burdened by excessive housing debt, if they choose to default on their mortgages, their properties will inevitably face foreclosure by the court. These foreclosed properties are initially auctioned at a 30% discount. And if there are no takers, the discount may increase. For those unable to sell their homes, the consequences is selling them at a significantly reduced price. This results in substantial financial losses, encompassing their initial down payments, paid interest, and diminished property value. Additionally, they may be required to cover the legal fees associated with the bank's lawsuit, which can amount to several hundred thousand yuan. Furthermore, these individuals find themselves on the credit blacklist, signaling the end of their comfortable modern life. Is there another way out? Yes, indeed. 
There, that alternative involves passing the property over to a professional debt bearer. While this choice entails losing the initial down payment, the accrued interest, and potentially paying an additional fee, it represents a lesser evil. It allows the homeowner to finally get rid of the troublesome asset, avoid ending up on the credit blacklist, and over the span of two years, work toward restoring a more stable and secure life. Consider this scenario. A 100 square meter apartment purchased two years ago for 21,000 yuan per square meter, totaling 2.1 million yuan in value. While the price had a drop today, finding a buyer has proven impossible, and the property won't move unless you slash the price to 1 million yuan or less, essentially selling it for half its original value. Now imagine you discover a professional debt bearer willing to purchase the property at the original price of 2.1 million yuan, on paper at least. In reality, the debt bearer doesn't provide the initial 500,000 yuan down payment, also you must pay them a 100,000 yuan fee. Moreover, you can't recoup the interest accrued over the past two years. Consequently, you, the homeowner, incur a loss of 700,000 yuan. Nonetheless, the debt bearer leverages this 2.1 million yuan property to secure a 1.5 million yuan bank loan, ultimately defaulting on it and become a defaulter. If homeowners opt not to seek the assistance of a professional debt bearer and instead face foreclosure due to default, the resulting auction would only yield 1 million yuan. However, this sum falls short of covering the remaining 1.5 million yuan, the bank loan, leaving the homeowner obligated to pay an additional 500,000 yuan to the bank. This scenario translates to a loss of 1.2 million yuan for the homeowner, encompassing the forfeiture of the initial 500,000 yuan down payment made two years ago, 100,000 yuan in accrued interest over that period, and legal expenses and litigation fees amounting to 100,000 yuan. Conversely, should homeowners decide to engage a professional debt bearer, they can mitigate their losses by 500,000 yuan. As property values decline further, the potential savings for homeowners who enlist the services of a professional debt bearer increases. If the property was initially purchased at a lower price and its appraised value was inflated, homeowners might even find themselves with a surplus ranging from 100 to 200,000 yuan in the end. This serves as an incentive for homeowners to explore this option. Certainly, there is another potential scenario. Homeowners, in the midst of their own financial challenges, might choose to become professional debt bearers themselves. They take on the role of helping others manage their debt while dealing with their own financial struggles. They leverage their properties through secondary mortgages and engage in various financial maneuvers such as obtaining renovation loans and maxing out credit cards before eventually defaulting on their obligations. When things reach a breaking point, these individuals may opt for a sink or swim approach, attempting to navigate the complexities of the financial system. In this dynamic, Chinese citizens demonstrate the remarkable resourcefulness and ingenuity. It's a situation where homeowners are willing to face the consequences, and the professional debt bearers are prepared to bear them. Under the mediation of intermediaries, properties change hands, money exchanges, and deals are struck. This intricate web of transactions results in a thriving industry, where individuals are willing to take substantial risks to navigate China's complex financial landscape. For those who become debt bearers, most of them were already struggling in society. They lacked stable employment and typically earned meager monthly incomes of 2 to 3,000 yuan. Their future appeared bleak and they felt a sense of uh, hopelessness, especially in times when many have lost their jobs, compounding their despair. 
In such challenging circumstances, intermediaries present an enticing opportunity, a chance to make quick money, ranging from tens of thousands to millions. However, there is a condition. They must become credit defaulters, ending up on the credit blacklist. This means they lose their ability to access bank loans and are restricted from using high-speed trains and airplanes. Surprisingly, there are many individuals willing to accept this role, particularly those who had previously engaged in fraudulent activities with online lenders. They readily embrace the chance to become professional debt bearers. Professional debt bearers have a prerequisite. They must have a clean credit history with no prior negative records. Once their credit passes scrutiny, other aspects like bank statements and income proofs can be manipulated or fabricated. This scheme is reminiscent of past instances where rural residents were deceived into buying homes in the city using unconventional means such as using garlic or watermelon as down payments. Intermediaries take the identity cards and the household registration documents of these professional debt bearers, then generate six months of financial records while engaging in various activities to enhance their credit worthiness, eventually meeting the standards set by banks. Currently, with the banks holding ample funds and lenient credit policies in place to stimulate the property purchases and boost consumer spending, obtaining housing loans from bank is relatively easy. Once they have property under their name, these professional debt bearers can proceed to access various platforms for home improvement loans, credit cards, and more. This process operates within a well-established framework and is not overly complicated. Upon listening this, it becomes evident that this scenario resembles the US subprime mortgage crisis that triggered the 2008 financial meltdown. It involves loose credit policies and risk mitigations, eventually bursting the real estate bubbles and causing a financial catastrophe. Unlike the United States, where real estate hasn't been prevented from declining in value by administrative fiat, China's property bubble is believed to be much, much larger. The Chinese government has employed various tactics such as reducing down payment, lowering interest rates, accepting property as collateral without verifying borrower's repayment capacity and even relaxing household registration policies, all aimed at maintaining high property prices. The emergence of the professional debt bearing industry and the proliferation of debtors reflect the government's efforts to stimulate the housing market. However, these measures have inadvertently spurred the resourcefulness of the Chinese population. Toxic assets are spreading rapidly and the risks are escalating. People are willing to risk their credit, even if the means being unable to borrow money in the future or losing access to high-speed trains and airplanes, all in the pursuit of wealth redistribution through the Chinese Communist Party's banking system. Much like a modern-day Robin Hood, robbing from the rich to aid the poor. In this case, they are robbing banks. China's state owned banks. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.